Okay, welcome back, ENG 360. This was uh, listing 1.1. Uh, Let's actually put that up there. Listing 1.1. How do we do comments? Comments are with a dash. All right, so this is listing 1.1. It's a one bit comparator. You have uh, these two inputs coming in. And if the output is equal, um, if the inputs are equal, the output is searched to a one. We kind of came up with the uh, SOP logic, and there's our implementation. Well, we, um, you know, we clicked on the VHDL file, and then we double clicked behavioral check syntax, and um, we compiled it, and it said behavioral check syntax completed successfully. So now you could either burn it, you could do some more stuff, burn it to a chip, or you could simulate it. Well, we actually have the simulation radio button selected up here, so I'm going to show you how to do some simulation with this. Well, first thing you need to do is add another VHDL file to your project. So left click XC3, XC3S500D, this guy right here, and then go to Project, New Source. Now, last time we did a VHDL module. Okay, we don't want it that time. What I want to do is I want to create a test bench, and I usually prefix those with TB, and then I'll call it uh, test bench on core. Yeah, because my VHDL module is core. This guy now is a test bench file. I don't want VHDL module. I want VHDL test bench. Okay, because that's going to be kind of a harness that's going to test your component. So if we click next here, then it says, oh, you're creating a test bench. Well, what do you want to test? Or which module do you want to test? Well, there's only one other module, which is core. So it gives me a choice here. Because if I had 10 or 15 VHDL components, I could pick whichever one I wanted to test. But there's only one, so it's the only one highlighted. So I'll choose core. Next, and finish. Okay. Now notice what happened here. If we look in the upper left-hand corner, there's my project, XC. 3S500, there's the chip, full flat grid, 320. Okay. And then here, I've got uh, two files. Okay, the core file is the VHDL file that we just created. If I double click that, that has my entity block and my architecture block. Well, it created a new file that's kind of nested outside that, which is the test bench file. And the indentation means that this test bench tests the file that's indented underneath it. It's a test bench file on the core. So let's double click the test bench file and you see there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. Now notice I have two tabs. I have core, that's the one we typed in last time, and I've got TB, test bench core. Well that's the one I just created. Let's get all, uh, rid of all the comments and kind of focus on just the real VHDL here. And notice once again we're using the IEEE library. Within the IEEE library, we're pulling out the standard logic 1164 package, and we're taking everything out of that package, all the types, functions, etc. Operators, we're taking it out. Then again, just like your other VHDL, there's two blocks. There's an entity block, and there's an architecture block. Okay? Architecture block's got a lot of stuff in it. Well, we'll try to make some sense out of this. The entity block is always empty. All right, test bench files, the entity block's going to be empty. Now the architecture block, notice what it's doing. This guy is test bench core. It's actually um, going to create an instance of your core component. So it kind of has to define the input and the output. Okay. So this is just a declaration of the component it's going to instantiate. Now this architecture block of a test bench has some variables. And I want to prefix those with TB just to let me know that these are variables in my test bench file. And they're the same name as the variables in the components I'm going to uh, simulate. Now, we're not going to use any clocks. We will later when we get into flip-flops and all that good stuff. So we can take the clock stuff, highlight it, and get rid of it. Okay. And then down here, this is where I create an instance of that VHDL module I talked about before. Okay, up here is a declaration. Okay, this is the declaration, and you can kind of see right here it says that. You declare it, and then down here you instantiate. Instantiate is a fancy word to mean makes make one or create an instance of. Okay, so then what you have to do is you got to map your variables. All right. Well, the way you map your variables is you take the variables in the test harness, which would be here, TB. Oops, I got them the wrong way. In the uh, actual component, you got I0, 
I1 and EQ, those guys get mapped to the variables here in my test bench, TB, TB, okay, that were declared up here. So I'm just mapping the variables in my component to variables here in my test bench. Notice they kind of have similar names. The test bench, the files are prefixed with a TB. Now, notice once again, I'm not using any clock, so we can get rid of this. Okay, makes life easier. And then what that does is it leaves me a process right here. We haven't talked about process blocks, but you don't really need to understand them to use them at this point in the course. So you've got a process block. And what you can do there is you can um, do all kinds, you can set variables, all right? So what I can do here is I can say, well, let's see, tb underscore um, i zero takes on the value of, let's see, zero. And tb i one takes on the value of, uh, let's call that zero also. And then let's uh, wait. What I'll do is I'll just cut this guy out of here, put it into there, and then I'm going to replicate that three times. Okay. And what I'm really doing in this process block is I'm kind of generating a whole bunch of test inputs that are going to get um, assigned to these variables, TB, which are then going to get mapped to the inputs on my, um, my component, and then the output, EQ, should get set. Okay. And let's see, if we wait, um, how about wait, waiting 200 nanoseconds? Let's wait 200 nanoseconds. And there you go. Now I've got I0 and I1 both equaling 0 here, so let's make I1 equal to 1 here and make I1, I0 1 here, I1 0, and then uh, both of them 1 here. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. And at this point, uh, it looks like we've gotten rid of all the errors, but let's double check it. Now I can go over to the left here and I can select the core and let's compile that guy. We didn't change anything, so it should compile. Now let's select the test bench file and we'll compile that one. Okay, so we have two VHDL files, a core and a test bench, and we've compiled both of them. Now make sure the core is selected and run simulate behavioral model. And it'll run that test bench file and give us some output here. And there you go. Now this is a whole other application. See how this guy is on top of the uh, ISE Project Navigator? Yeah, it's a whole other application. Okay. Let's bring it back over to here. And now if you look at this, um, there's your test bench variables right here, TB0, uh, I, I0, I1, and EQ. And what we're doing is we're setting them. Now you're going from 999.994 picoseconds to up here to this. Well, doesn't really show you much. What you need to do is you need to go up here and find the icon that says, uh, I think that's a zoom to fit or zoom to full screen. It doesn't, the IntelliSense doesn't seem to be working. But if you click on this guy right here, it kind of zooms out. And notice what happened. From 0 to 200 nanoseconds, TBI0 was 0, TBI1 was 0, and the output EQ was 1. Yeah, because this is a 1-bit comparator. 0 and 0 equal, we asserted the output. Now at 200 nanoseconds, the input on TB I1 changed from a 0 to a 1. So now I've got, on I0, I've got 0, and I1, I've got 1. They're not equal. EQ deasserted to a 0, and it stayed there. Oops, let me go back, zoom to full view here. And um, at this point right here, at 400 nanoseconds, I0 went to 1, I1 went to 0, but they're still not equal, so the output is still low. And then at 600 nanoseconds, both of them are 1, the output asserted. So what we did in our test bench file on that process part is we generated like a truth table. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We waited 200 nanoseconds for each one of these guys before we changed the input. And then these variables in our test bench file were mapped to the variables of our component. And then our component executed. And it gave me a simulation. And there you go. All right. So for your assignment, why don't you try to um, Maybe modify your VHDL instead of doing a, um, an SOP. Uh, do it all with NAND gates. And um, 
see if you can get a simulation that looks the same. All right, I think I'm going to stop there and uh, see you next time.